and Gray Street at Morningside USA. Please welcome your host, Lori Baker. Hi there. Thank you, Tammy Sue. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Morningside and our beautiful studio audience. We love having our studio audience. It is so important for us to have our friends here, and they, they're like our family, really. And today, Jim is not here with us. Just get it to, to you right up top. He's not feeling good today, so he stayed home. He rested, but I feel very comfortable because I'm so excited to have Doug Hershey back with us. Thank you. you. Have such a friend to this ministry, and we love you dearly. And you were with us just not too long ago. But we just weren't able to get in everything we wanted to get yeah. in. And Jim said, Doug, would you come back yeah. and, you know, shortly, so in, in, really soon. And so here you are. And with this beautiful book called Jerusalem Rising, um, I call these coffee table books, but I mean, you can put yeah. them wherever. But it's absolutely stunning. And we are going to talk about this today. Doug Hershey is an author, educator, and history explorer. Doug shares from the perspective of historian and storyteller, which I love, his accounts of Israel. The Middle East and the awakening of Bible prophecy are as intriguing as they are rare. Doug is the author of the best-selling photo book, Israel Rising. Welcome back to our program, Doug Hershey. Thank Thanks for you, having Doug. Me. We Always love good to be back you. With you guys. You're, you're amazing. What, what I know, you know, the last time you were with us, Jim even said to me after the broadcast, he said, you know, this takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, God only knows what, it ta what you have gone through to put these two books together. The first one that we offered a short while back, Israel Rising, and now your brand new book, Jerusalem Rising. It's yeah, each, each of those books was only about two or three years of production and, and research and study and photo shoots and getting the right angles and, and hunting them down. So it was, it was a lot of work, but it's, you know, when, when you're doing something you really love and you're passionate about it, it just, time just sort of goes. So. Okay, so, so how, how did these books come about? I mean, was it just something in your heart that you wanted to share with the world? or uh, You know, it, it started with, uh, I, have a tr I have a small travel company called Ezra Adventures, and so we're taking small groups through through Israel, mm -hmm. and it really started, Israel Rising started as what I thought what might be an advertisement for the travel company. I, I, okay. I actually put the photos together thinking that, you know, there's a lot of people that may not ever get a chance to That's go to right. Israel or to see the land. That's and right. so I wanted to be able to do this then and now aspect, and it was kind of tied in with, I was reading in uh, at that time Ezekiel 36 about the land reviving when the Jewish people were back and and began seeing a lot of that on my own and I thought you know this would be a great way just you know, to stir some interest for the travel company I'm not mm. sure if anybody outside of that would really even care and mm. uh, since then it's sort of you know my my whole life direction as the Lord does yeah. kind of took a, a, a whole new avenue and a whole That's new direction and Jerusalem was in my heart for a long time, and so this has become a series that I've, I've been expanding out and, and, um, and continues to grow, thank God. It's very exciting. And, you know, I've been, you know, the, the team knows here and those, and those of you watching, I'm sure you've seen so many of our broadcasts lately. If you haven't, you need to get your PTL app, watch the broadcast, yes. watch everything from the uh, past that we've been doing. But we've been doing so many shows and programs on Israel. Amen. God is doing something. Yes. So, don't you love yes. it? He just Amen. keeps bringing yeah. guest after guest and after guest. And they yeah. are because it is so vital. It is so important yeah. at this time like never before as he's preparing his bride, Amen. as he's preparing us right now. And we pray that this broadcast blesses you today yeah. as God is preparing your heart as he helps you understand more and more, especially in these times that we're living in. And before I get into this, Mondo, I do want you to hit real quick some headline news. We cannot not talk about what's going on in Afghanistan. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm just so burdened. I know the, yeah. the body of Christ has been praying and will continue to pray for the people of, Af of Afghanistan, for our troops, for the translators, for the, the ten, they are saying, you know, 10 to 40,000 people that um, are Americans that are in that country that are still not out. And it's very disturbing to me. I'm a news watcher. And, um, but tell us what the latest is. Absolutely. According to 
a lot of the websites, this is what's taking place. Taliban betrays promise not to murder civilians as right. photo reveals traitors disposing dead bodies of victims in mass graves. Church leaders are warning, this is another according to CBN News, church leaders are warning the Taliban are going to eliminate the Christian population of Afghanistan. Let me read you what's going on inside of this headline. Quote, there weren't a lot of Christians 20 years ago during the Taliban time, but today we are talking wow. about five to 8,000 local Christians, and they all live all over Afghanistan. According to Open Doors, Afghanistan is the second, get this, the second most dangerous place to be a Christian in the world today behind North Korea. Pray for Christians in Afghanistan right now. Pray for the ministries there. According to The Hill, after Kabul, China exploits after America's weakness takes place. China right now is trying to take the place of America. And they're funding a lot of the situation that is taking place behind the scenes. They are acknowledging the administration from the Taliban giving them false promises that if they take place as a new government, China will get behind them. But again, it's another betrayal behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. CBS News, more U.S. forces deploy. This is, again, Haiti. The death toll tops over 2,000 people. Let me give you this last one right here. The shocking numbers, this is according to CNN, the shocking numbers behind the Lake Mead drought is now turned into a crisis. But Mondo's reading to you right now, all of these are the signs of the days that we are living in. We are in the beginning of the end. And this is why this book is so important and why all these amazing guests we've had on, Doug, what, so recent, uh, so re the recent, uh, uh, oh, I, I was watching our own show this morning, early this morning, and I'm like, it's blowing my mind just hearing. Um, it was Archbishop yeah, Dominica. Dominique. Oh my goodness, yeah, Berman. Oh, she's amazing. And we were scheduled to sit and do a show with her, and it ended up three shows because we couldn't stop talking with her. She was just she's you know Israeli, but she they're in the states as well, and she's the most amazing woman of God, and she helped us understand more and more what's going on. So we are um, excited about what God is doing and how he keeps bringing this to the forefront. And I also love in your brand new, beautiful, stunning, this is a stunning, beautiful book, Jerusalem Rising. It's the city of peace reawakens ancient prophecy with modern lens which I love because you get both. And th we're going to talk about that. But our dear friend, who really is like a brother to me, literally, he's a, like a brother to me, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. So when he agreed to do this, how did you feel about that? Were you... Yeah, I mean, I, like you, I, I know that, you know, the amount of... Uh, of, uh, of um information and a lot of requests that come his a way lot for, for all sorts of things and yes. so it was actually through a mutual friend of ours as well Kevin Jessup with oh, the yeah. return Love so Kevin. Kevin was one that actually helped kind of put some of the pieces together yes. and and the last time I was on the show I was here with Rabbi Yehuda Glick yes. who wrote the foreword to the book that was excellent. and so so it's special to me to, to have not only Rabbi Jonathan Kahn yes. a believer and an Orthodox rabbi uh, in, in Yehuda yeah uh, to be able to to write the same but for for Jonathan, uh, he asked me specifically and said, "Well, how? You know, what would you like me to say?" And I mm -hmm. said, "You know, um, I'm actually kind of just leaning on you. Like, just ask the Lord and just kind of write whatever." Yeah. Um, and and but I told him like Zechariah eight was the ancient prophecy that we're focusing on, and mm -hmm. he said, "Oh, great! Like that just." That kind yes. of turned it on, and that—that yeah. that was all I knew. Yeah. And so then I didn't—I uh, didn't even know what he was going to be writing until he sent me this. Mm, and then uh, there was no—there was no revisions. There was no like, hey, could you change this or that? Right. It was—it was almost as if he had been reading my notes, and oh. I knew what was in the manuscript. Yes. And, and so it was just really—it was really special. I believe that because I know Rabbi, and that's how he—that's how he operates. Yeah. And it's a day, when he's downloaded, he just starts writing, yeah. and that's it for him. If you don't have this beautiful book, it's for a gift of forty dollars to the ministry and 
that includes your shipping yes. and your handling. That's right, and Mon, what and else? We also have the friends and family. This is three of the Jerusalem Rising books, and that's for a donation of $110 to the ministry. And better yet, we try and we try and equip you with tools that will help you to minister to your loved ones, to your pastors, to those that you have influence in your life with. And so we've put together an offer of six of the beautiful books, and that's for a $200 donation to the ministry. That includes the shipping and handling. And with the six books, we're also going to include a free gift of Israel Rising, the land of Jerusalem reawakens, and it's music with a heart for Israel. So that's included when you when you call us right now, 1-888-988-1588. Also, remember, you can go to the website, jimbakershow.com. Okay, so like I said earlier, this book is truly <laughs> stunning. And we have a trailer I'd like you to watch it, about the book. Go ahead and roll it, guys. I'm Doug Hershey, author of the best-selling book, Israel Rising, Ancient Prophecy, Modern Lens, that looks at the revival of this land and combines an ancient prophecy, regional history, and stunning then and now photo comparisons. I'm pleased to announce a second volume in the Ancient Prophecy, Modern Lens series, a brand new photo book, Jerusalem Rising. In Israel Rising, we looked at the physical revival of this land. In Jerusalem Rising, we looked at the prophesied restoration of this city and why it has arrested men's hearts through the centuries, even in its desolation. Zechariah 8 speaks to a desolate city and its people about what is coming. Some of it seems to defy logic or given traditional conflicts, seems almost impossible. It speaks of a time when his people will return to the city, the elderly and children will dwell peacefully in the streets, and the nations will begin to flood here. Perhaps most stunning is God saying that he will return to live in this city with his people. To have a closer look at all this city has endured, I've obtained the oldest photos of Jerusalem ever taken, some from 1844, 1850s, and 1860s, even into the early 1900s. With an Israeli adventure photographer, we went back and recreated these angles, some for the first time ever, to show how the dramatic changes are happening in this city. These rare photos have a story of their own, hidden away and forgotten in time until the last 15 years. You'll read quotes about how a desolate Jerusalem has been the longing of pilgrims, the goal of conquerors, and the prize of empires, whether for good or evil intentions. Men like Christopher Columbus to William Shakespeare to Yasser Arafat or Saddam Hussein all have had Jerusalem on their minds, but why? With some amazing photo comparisons, we've documented some sweeping changes in Jerusalem, from the famed gates and walls to the old city to the new city rising up around it. These amazing then and now comparisons reveal a Jerusalem like you've never seen before. You'll also find short blogs of personal encounters of some beautiful Jerusalem residents that helped us along the way, shared their life with us as we've hunted down these old photo locations. No other city on earth has had its history foretold from its destruction to empty desolation to a revival as a major player on the world stage. Today, according to prophecy and against all odds, Jerusalem is rising again. And it's just the beginning. See the evidence for yourself. It's so true. It's so exciting. And I love what, Doug, you know, I love your heart. And I love what, what you said. You know, some people may never have that opportunity to, mm. to go to Jerusalem. I mean, I, I, I know so many uh, Christian leaders that have been there, you know, hundreds of times. And, yeah. and it's, so I'm always asking them questions. I've only been once, but I can tell you what, once with Rabbi Khan was enough to, like, <laughs> we, yeah. we, a few weeks with him, it was beautiful. And, um, and Mondo was there as well, and some of our team. But it, I'll never forget us going to Jerusalem that first time and it, how it just overtakes you. You're yeah, it's, it's, it's not unusual for, for people, oh, my groups or yours or whoever. I mean, it, the, the, the first time that you your eyes lay on the city. I mean, yeah. you, we've been reading about it in the scriptures. And, yes. And, you know, you kind of have this idea and this image of your mind, and then suddenly you there it is in front there of you. There it is. So it's, sometimes it's not unusual for people just to break down and just begin weeping. If you've never been there before, and maybe you'll never go, but you're reading the Word, mm -hmm. and you have books like this. I want to know, how were you able to obtain these old, rare photos of Jerusalem? 
Yeah, the book has some of the oldest photos of Jerusalem ever taken from 1844, 1850s, 1860s. And the, there's a, a really special story to me surrounding these old photos from 1844. Back at that time, this is the early days of photography. And so there's this brand new, at that time, state-of-the-art uh, photography, daguerreotype mm -hmm. that uh, was these copper plates covered in silver. And to, to create the images, you would put certain, um, certain chemicals on them and put, you know, put them in the, in the photo box and expose them to light for two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you would, if, if, if the plate is in the box and then you pull out the plate and you turn it around, that's what you're, it's, it's a reverse image. Mm -hmm. And so if you're taking a picture of someone waving their right hand when you pull out the image, mm -hmm. it's a picture of waving their left hand. So yeah. there's, there's this French photographer in the uh, 1840s who actually really isn't even a photographer. He's a painter. He loves mm. architecture. He likes landscape. And so he takes this brand new state-of-the-art photography to the Middle East. He travels around for three or four years doing these photography uh, photos, like the one that you're seeing on, on the screen, mm -hmm. but with the intention of coming back and painting them. He's not thinking about a photography. He's thinking about just having something that he can then paint. And so he never actually shows his photography to anybody. He uses them as... As a uh, as a guide for you know painting and for drawing some things that he you know then sells, but what he does then is takes these he over 900 of these these plates puts them in boxes and basically stores them away. He ne there's they've never been uh, publicly exhibitioned or anything like that. It's uh, wow. stories say like he might show them to dinner guests, but 30 years after he dies in 1920, one of his uh, neighbors buys his dilapidated estate, starts going through like his garage or his closet or whatever, they, and he finds these boxes, opens them up, and goes, you know, what are these? You know, and so that's the first time they they're really discovered. They're not. They don't find their way onto the world stage until 2003. One of these plates, actually several of these plates come up for auction on one of these you know, high-end auctions. Mm -hmm. One plate sells for over $900,000 oh, to, to a Saudi prince yeah, of, sure. of like something from Rome or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And suddenly everybody's like, who is this old photographer and where did these plates come from? And so by 2014, I mean, this is all really recent history. 2014, the Smithsonian... Impressive. Uh, digitizes a lot of these old black and white photos. That's incredible. Uh, like what you're seeing on the screen, but they're they're digitizing them as the actual photo plates, which mm -hmm. is the reverse image. And so for me, I know Jerusalem pretty well. Yeah, like, you should, because like, you, uh, you take tour, you yeah, take people on tours. Uh, you know, I, prior to COVID, I spent you know, six to seven months of, of the year there for several years prior. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of the back streets and things. And I would look at these old photos going, you know, where are these angles from? I have no idea until a wow. friend of mine said, if you flip them around for, for the true view, uh, that way, you know, it makes a little bit more sense. And so once we did that, I thought, I know exactly where these wow. are at. But the, really but the story doesn't end there. In, in 1844, going back in history, a, a world away, there's an Ottoman sultan who is uh, looking at the Ottoman Empire, saying it's time to revive, it's time to uh, sort of um, modernize you know, what's, what's happening in the empire, and mm -hmm. he orders a census of the entire uh, Ottoman Empire, which includes Jerusalem. So oh, yeah. in 1844 is the first census of Jerusalem probably since biblical times. My. And so, and wow. it's happening at the exact, again, these, these two men have no idea who each other are, but at the exact same time, there's this French painter who's taking pictures of Jerusalem in 1844. Mm -hmm. There is an Ottoman census whose records say that in 1844 in Jerusalem, there's only 15,000 people. And the majority of them, 7,000, over 7,000 of them are Jewish. And so here we are today, now that we've been able, in Jerusalem Rising is the first time we've ever published these photos from the true view. We're able to show you know, the, the readers in the book, this is what Jerusalem looks like in 1844. And according to historical records, there's only 15,000 people in Jerusalem. And that is so, so significant to what God was about to do with the, with the return of the Jewish people and the revival of Jerusalem. So it's, wow. it really sets the whole stage. It really does. That's all. Oh, this is awesome. I don't I know if you really get how, the work that goes into this. And, mm. and really, God, really, his hand on your life to be able to get these photos and then go in with your photographer. How do you pronounce the name again? Eden. Eden, Eden. Rom. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and to go in with the, your photographer who took these beautiful pictures of Jerusalem now. In the trailer that we just ran, you said that no other city has arrested men's hearts. I love this. No other city has arrested men's hearts, even 
in its desolation. Would you explain that? Yeah, that's, Jerusalem has always had this draw to, to people regardless of who was there, what it looked like, how beautiful it was. And so you know, even in the 13th century, and these are some quotes I have in Jerusalem Rising, mm -hmm. I'll read to you. Good. One from the 13th century says, great is the desolation. Jerusalem is more ravaged than the rest of the country, but despite the destruction, it is very good. That's coming from a, from a rabbi from, uh, from the 16th century, or sorry, from the 13th century. Uh, Christopher Columbus, many of you know, you know, he sails the ocean blue, 1492. <laughs> yeah. What a lot of people don't know is in his letters back to the queen, it's saying, I want all of the proceeds of my exploration to go towards the recovery of Jerusalem and, and to the restoration of Jerusalem, which is amazing that he would, like his mind was on Jerusalem even while he's exploring and, you know, and finding these that discoveries. That is amazing. In 1837, uh, a, a French poet says that Jerusalem is a city of shining light and color and the view is most splendid that can be presented to the eye of a city that is no more. Uh, in other words, this city is, is really no more. It's, it's, it's desolate, but right. he's still viewing it as a city of shining light and color. So, mm -hmm. so the question is, is there's no other city on earth that has really grabbed people's hearts this right. way. So exactly. the question is, why is that? Mm -hmm. And you know, we know from the scriptures that it's the only city that God has said that I've chosen it as my dwelling place. We're yes. to pray for the peace yeah. of. It's, it's something special about when God chooses something, mm -hmm. then uh, then sometimes the, you know, the, the the first time that somebody visits, you know, you have this powerful impacting you do. moment where, yeah. It's, yeah, and it's not because the, the the city is just special by itself. It's special because God has chosen That's it, and you're it. and you're stepping into the promises that God has placed over this particular city. That is city. so true. You say in the pre uh, preface of your book that no other city changes people so dramatically mm. upon their first visit, like we were just talking about. Will yeah. you tell us about your first visit yeah, my, to Jerusalem? Yeah, mine was, I was, uh, I was on, a, uh, on a small bus trip with, uh, with Christians and Jews, and we go to, to the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. uh, a really iconic view, and if, if you've never been there, it's, it's something that you would recognize for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's usually a pretty busy place, and there's lots mm -hmm. of things that are going on, and I just had this moment where things just for me just sort of slowed down, and I'm, I'm looking over the city, the, the old walls, the, uh, the, the Temple Mount, yeah. and what strikes me is these white puffy clouds that are rolling over the city. And, and I just began to look at those thinking, those white puffy clouds look a whole lot like the, the white puffy clouds that, you know, you might have, you know, drifting over your own home. Right. And suddenly I just had this moment where it was like, wow, everything has suddenly become alive. Like, this is a real place. This is no longer a, a, a city of... Um, in my imagination or mm -hmm. my mind or, you know, like uh, Bible stories and, mm -hmm. you know, Sunday morning. But this is a real place with real people and real horns honking and real, you know, yeah. voices right. and real problems, but also real prophecies that mm -hmm. God is starting to bring about. And so that was, that was my first, uh, it, uh, first real uh, interaction. And I, I knew in that moment that even if it took another 20 or 25 or 30 years, I knew where I needed to come back to. I mm. knew that my life and my heart would be um, you know, really connected to the city, connected to the land of Israel. Of yeah. course, this was long before any of the photo books or anything like this. Sure. But it was something in my heart that I knew that I am, I am most definitely coming back here. I am oh. most definitely mm. tied into what's, what's happening here. And that, mm. was, that was really my, my very first encounter through you know, white puffy clouds. Yeah, through white like. puffy clouds. I love it. You know, I just saw a picture up on the screen a little bit ago the guys put up. But, and I actually turned to this in, in the mm. book and said to Doug, I love this picture. So you can see the old. There it is. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the new view. Mm. Mm. which that's Doug. And do you mind telling us who yeah, that that's, girl uh, is next to you? That's, my, that's the secret cameo of myself and my 16-year-old daughter at that time. She's 18 now. Oh, that's um, sweet. But she, at the time, she was doing a lot of photography and was really becoming a love. And I said, well, mm -hmm. why don't you know, come with me? You know, come yeah. with me on the, on the journey. Come yeah. with me on the photo shoot. You Gosh, know, Ed and, take your kids. Ed yeah. and Ram is uh, he was this world-class photographer. He travels all over. You can learn from him. You can enjoy kind of what's, you know, what's happening. And so... Um, that that particular shot, we found the location, and one of my other friends, that from uh, an yeah. Israeli friend that was with me, said, "Hey, you guys should stand over there and like recreate that." And so it was all of that kind of happened like on the moment, on the spot, and it became a really special photo because it's something. Her name is Rachel. It's something Aww. Rachel and I look at, and it's something wow. that I love. You know, that. Now that uh, when I right before coming here, these these books are hot off the press. They are. So, so I mean, if if people are ordering here from home, um, I mean, these are brand new books. They are. And so just before coming here, I gave Rachel one of our <gasps> one of one of the books, and, and she. 
immediately she immediately turned to this page and was ready to show that her friends that she's she's, uh, she's trapped in the pages with me. That's right. <laughs> Don't you love that, everybody? I, us women love that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'll just tell you that right now. So you have a map of Jerusalem in your book mm. that actually shows yes. what God says in Solomon in Second Chronicles 7, 12, and 16. I have chosen and consecrated this temple in Jerusalem so that my name may be there forever. My name and my heart will always be there. How did you discover this? Yeah, there's, there's two places in the scriptures where God says he's placed his name on the land forever. And there's one is in Shiloh, where the Ark of the Covenant sat yes. with Samuel and that whole, the whole story. That's one of the promises. Mm -hmm. And the second is in Jerusalem. Now, the, the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet is pronounced Sheen. Sheen. And it's uh, that the, the, it the, the picture, that's the, that's the sheen. Now, in Jewish tradition, this represents the, the, one of the names of God, El Shaddai. And so this image you'll see on, uh, on uh, mezuzahs, which are the little boxes that are, that are hung on, on, the, on the homes of, yes. of Jewish, uh, Jewish homes, yes. uh, on the phylacteries of uh, people that are praying, which is the little box. Sometimes you'll see Orthodox Jews praying at the wall. They'll have a little box. So true. And so, I was wondering what those were. Right, You're, exactly. That's so, good. So what that is, that's uh, when the Bible talks about taking the word of God and putting it between your eyes or you know, putting it on the doorpost. These are very practical applications in Jewish tradition that have been done. Right. And so also, and, and for those of you that might be watching their Star Trek lovers, <laughs> when uh, when high priests would pray the ironic blessing, mm -hmm. they would hold their hands like, like this. this. Yes, In, and that's the shape of the sheen because it was is the blessing of the name of God. And that's so, what Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Every time he's here, if you right. notice, yeah. he always prays like that, doesn't he? Everybody. Yeah. I right. mean, and that's, those and that's and that's a traditional thing. And, yeah. and the reason why that is is because that is the shape of the of the twenty first letter. Now, for those of you that are interested in sort of numerology. Uh, 21 is seven three times, seven, seven, seven. So that's a, a, a significant yeah. thing that's connected to the name of God. But Star Trek fans would know that from, from Spock. That's true. <laughs> but, and, and this is a completely different story, but yeah. you can go online and you can find stories of Lem Leonard Nimoy, the, the yeah. man who played Spock, mm -hmm. talking about ra being raised in a Jewish home and, and watching rabbis at an early age giving the, the ironic blessing oh, by doing this. And that's where the idea came from that was then tied I in. I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, it's amazing. I was never a Star Trek fan. My brothers were. Well, I was but, more you know. Star Wars myself rather than <laughs> Star Trek. But, but, uh, but for those of you that are interested, that's where yeah, it comes that's from. Yeah, that's interesting. And so, so that is a, it, it's a significant letter in Judaism. Now, when you're looking at an aerial shot, and I have this in the book as well, and mm -hmm. it's not an aerial location. This is a, a, an old photo of a topographical map of Jerusalem. Okay. And so it's just the land. So the actual old city is not on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's a, a great illustration as well. But what you're looking at, if you're looking at, at the valleys mm -hmm. is the shape of a sheen. And so when <gasps> God says in the scriptures, oh my. I have put my wow. name there forever, if you're looking from an aerial photo, if you're looking sort of God's eye you know, view, looking down on the city of Jerusalem, you're literally looking at a sheen that, that represents in Jewish history the name of God that's literally placed within the hills of wow. Jerusalem. It's amazing. That is so cool. That is really amazing. I never knew that. Yeah, it's Thank you. See, this this is this book is a this it's very prophetic. First of all, I will tell you that, and it's not just a beautiful beautiful picture book of the old and the new mm. Jerusalem, but, um, and like inside the Jaffa Gate, and oh, that's so exciting. But I never knew that. Oh, that is so fascinating to me. I could go on and on about that kind of thing. Boy, Kim, you should have told me that. You know I would have gotten all excited about that. <laughs> it's one of Kim, the surprises we have inside. It's not surprises, yeah. yes. I love that kind of stuff. So in the book, you share several stories that you call personal encounters, yeah. you and your photographer, Adam, did I say it right? Eden. Eden, Eden, Eden Ram, um, and there's a picture of the two of them, and that's in the book as well, had a personal encounter with a guy named Ari, a meeting you said was a divine appointment. Would you tell us that story? Yeah, so we had about five days to shoot all of these photos. and so Only five days? Yeah, we, we walked wow. about, I, we kept track of it on, uh, you know, on these little apps we have on our phone. We walked a, 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 an average of about nine miles a day, wow. up and down the hills, up that's and down a, the steps. It's a lot. I mean, that's we were, a lot of work. It was a lot of work. It was like we almost had to train for it. But yeah, I mean, exactly. so, so for, those, for those five days, I mean, we were under a, a real time crunch. There's a shot of us on the Jaffa Gate kind of looking oh, for these yes. particular angles. Right. But, um, 
but there were some photos that I thought, man, I just, I just don't, I kind of have an idea. And so I, I have a friend that works in the city of David mm -hmm. and I, I con contacted him and I said, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for somebody that can help me. Can you guys help me? Do you have somebody on staff? And in a very Israeli fashion, somebody, you know, my friend on the other end, he says, you need to talk to Ari. Ari knows everything. <laughs> He's the best. And, and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm being sold at something, you know, in a, in a, in a little uh, shop in the old city. I right. feel like, I'm yeah. like, okay, is this guy for real? Yeah. And yeah. so I, uh, I got Ari's uh, email and I sent him six different photos that I just had no idea. I know that they're in the old city. I, I know some of the back streets, but I don't even know where to begin. I didn't have the time. And he, he responds in about 10 minutes and says, oh, well, that one's over by this gate. And this one is, is taken from the, from the floor of the Kidron Valley and looking up, mm -hmm. but there's some new buildings there. And, you know, I'm not sure if you can still get the angle or, or, you know, you can't get this one anymore because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, there's different construction. And so I set up an appointment. I said, do you have any time like in the next couple of days? And he said, well, actually, um, I don't think I put this in the book, but you know, he said, actually, uh, you know, I had a group cancel. So I have these four hours that are free. I'm like, I'll take it. Yes. And so we meet him and, um, and they just had a photo up of, of us looking at an iPad. We had all these photos on a, on an iPad that we would take to a particular location. Exactly. Look like how that. cool that is. And, and wow. literally like hold these up and look at, at, at the landscape. And we'd say, okay, I think we need to be about you know, 500 feet to the left to line this up a little bit better. Wow. But Ari was so amazing. He would, he would take one glance. He said, okay, what's the next one? We would turn the page and you know he would look at the the old photo and go okay that one's over this way and we would just he, he would take off like wow. just start marching off and so we were struggling to keep up with him but mm -hmm. I mean he would just one glance at these and he said oh that's over here oh we need to walk up the hill actually if we take a shortcut through this one particular graveyard and up around the back back side of you know this building or whatever and we'll be there I mean he was really amazing and so it 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 was this divine appointment that kind of shrunk our our production time of what would have taken me probably a day to find all of these places and looking and sure. talking to the right people or a right. shopkeeper. Of course. Uh, Ari was like the perfect guy who had his schedule cleared for the perfect time that we needed. And I, you know, we hired him on. And so he was, he was a, uh, he, he was a gift. That was a is, gift. Uh, uh, that is a divine appointment wow. by God right there. Yeah. That only yeah. God could make that happen. Yeah. And we're grateful yeah. that the Lord did that for you because you know why? Because it wasn't just about having that moment just for you, That's right. but what yeah. he, God knew your heart and yeah. he knew that you were going to share that with the world. Yeah. Well, if, uh, again, I mean, if, if, if I wouldn't have run into him, there's a lot of photos in the book that, that wouldn't have made it into the book to, to even really to share. And so it was, Thank it, it, was you, though, it was a real Doug. gift. I mean, this is a real gift. This book is a treasure. It really is. And Marisela, would you just let everybody know how they can get this book? Because our absolutely. time, we're like this rocking and rolling yes, here today. Absolutely. And I just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity. I know I'm getting yes. one for my mom because my mom is taught. She's yeah. taught me so much about Israel and Jerusalem my whole entire life. And she's gone several times to the Holy Land. But um, I know I'm getting one from my mother to put on her coffee table. And you know, and it's, it's really great for prayer warriors, too. Jerusalem is the only That's city right. on earth that says that we're to pray for the peace of. Yes. So, right. so as you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, if you want some images to, to connect with yes. not only biblical locations that you're familiar with, but what God is doing in the city right now, I mean, yes. this can be a, a perfect launching That's pad right. for praying for the peace yes. of Jerusalem. And you know, Doug, I love exactly what you're saying, because even during this broadcast, I just feel the Holy Spirit even stirring me and saying, this is not a book. Right. This That's is something that is a prophecy. It's prophetic. It's a prophecy that God keeps his word and that when he chose Israel, he doesn't abandon his people. And you and I, God keeps even in my own studies, he keeps bringing me back to Romans 10, 11, 12, where he's reminding me, Maricela, you, the Gentiles have been grafted into the root of David. And that's why we see such a stirring even on the, this broadcast is that God is reminding us. He is saying these things must take place. And part of the things that have to take place is that his gospel has to be preached. His people have to know the truth of who Jesus, our Messiah is. And so I just look at this book as such an opportunity. God is giving you and I an opportunity to reach those who sometimes you may have someone that you feel they just, God, we've tried. I have poured my heart out to you, Lord. I have cried for the salvation of my loved ones. But you never know what the Lord can do. You never know when someone opens how the Lord would utilize a book 
that is a tool to be used for him to say, I am real. I am the Lord. And so I do, I just urge you right now, this is a way we believe this ministry, we believe that we can give you tools that can help you, that can help you understand the days that we're living in. We are truly, mom, you know, I know dad's not here today, but if he was here, he would be shouting. Yes. We are the revelation generation. Amen. We, we are. are the generation that we believe will see the coming of our Lord and Savior on the in the clouds. We believe that. And so we want to thank you, though. This is a way for you to partner. This is a gift. We always believe in sending you something that can help bless you, that can help bless others. But when you give that $40 donation, you're helping this ministry. You are standing with the voice of the prophets that must go into all the world. That donation is a blessing to us. And so it's just a $40 donation. I really feel yeah. strong that not just getting one book, but That's really right. getting the three book yeah. offer. Yeah. I don't know how you made this <laughs> deal with Doug because you also do all yes. the book deals and everything and product deals, but yes. this is an amazing offer. Yes, that's right. This is three. This is our friends and family offer, which is three of the books for a $110 donation that includes shipping and handling, or we also have six books available, six of Jerusalem Rising. That's for a donation of $200 to the ministry shipping and handling and we're also including that free gift of Israel rising you know but I just I feel just so strong to say when you give give unto the Lord and knowing that the Lord is using this platform he is using the voice of the prophets because he knows that guess what he is returning yes, he and is. his desire is that his people you know, I even believe in, even as we're talking about Israel and Jerusalem, is that we should be crying out, Lord. We cry out for the salvation of your people in Jerusalem, Lord. This is a reminder for us to cry out, Lord, that their eyes would be opened. Lord, that when we look at this, Lord God, that we would cry out for their salvation, that mm -hmm. they would call upon the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and they shall Amen. know their salvation is drawing near. Yes. And so when you give that gift, you're giving unto the Lord. You're saying, Lord, your word, the word of God has to be proclaimed. And we know through the means of this right here, mom, through, yeah. through the phone, yeah. through the lens that you're watching right now, mm -hmm. this is how it is possible for the gospel to be preached into all nations, to mm -hmm. all tribes. And so we thank you that when you give to the ministry, you're helping us, you're supporting us. You're saying, Jim, I believe in this voice of the Pro Prophets Network. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm standing with you. And so you can call us at 1-888-988-1588 to give your donation unto the Lord. And if dad was sitting here, he would say, I need your help. Yeah. He if sure those would. of you who are sitting out there saying you have this stirring, we see the news, we see what is happening. That's right. We see the prophetic timeline right before our, our very eyes. But the Lord has allowed this ministry to bring forth our guests, yes. the anointed, those who he has called. Yes. And in order for their voices to go forth, they must be given a platform. Yes. They must be given a way to be heard. And so the Lord will bless yes, this will. ministry. And so I want to thank you guys right now. If you feel led, call and give that SOS. This is our month. We've been saying, if you want to stand with us, we need your help. Yes. We need the help of believers to rally together and to help this ministry. That's right. To keep bringing this um, amazing yes. uh, people that very few places do you get what we get and it, it to get the, to teach us and especially as these days grow more chaotic and crazy and yes. and it can be so disheartening and yet the lord we know the we know the end as jim way says we know the end Amen. of the book we yes, know we but Amen. we know we got to go through yes. these times That's we right. know we do now Doug, your book is inspired by the prophecies of Zechariah. Will you explain more about that connection? Yeah, in Zechariah 8, it says uh, that, thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. What a statement in the Amen. Old Covenant by one of the yes. prophets. I will return. Yeah, Amen. think about that. And, yes. and, 
and live in the, in the midst of Jerusalem. Uh, thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women will again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each man with his staff in his hand because of his age and the children. Uh, the streets in, in the city will be filled with boys and girls yeah. playing in the streets. And later on in the end of the chapter, it talks about nations coming to Jerusalem. And so part of this ancient prophecy, Modern Lens series, is looking at these biblical prophecies, not so much through an allegorical or metaphor sort of way. I mean, mm -hmm. there's certainly spiritual applications we can draw from it, but when this, when God talks to us about things, especially in prophecy, it's usually to help us. It's to mm -hmm. give us very practical instructions. And so part of what we wanted to do is these are things that have really never quite happened before. Yes, there's always been men and women or children in Jerusalem, but it speaks of a time when there is going to be an aspect of security, an, as an aspect of safety, and that nations will begin flooding back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so really in the last 50 years, really since 1967, mm -hmm. when uh, Jerusalem for the first time in thousands of years comes under Jewish hands again, Jerusalem has been enjoying a period of safety in history that really it, it never has and really yeah. for a very long time. That's but right. furthermore, never before in history have the nations begun begin flooding to Jerusalem as they were even prior to COVID. So in 2018 and 2019 were the largest tourism numbers in Israel ever. So in 2018, there were 4 million people from the nations coming, uh, coming to Israel, coming to Jerusalem. Uh, 2019 was 4.5 million. My and, goodness. And the, and the context, of, of course, of, of, uh, of Zechariah 8 is people coming to seek the Lord. Right. But it's undeniable that never before in history have the nations been coming to Israel. And again, in, in the photo book, I mean, it'll show you that what Jerusalem looked like a hundred years ago. It was a dump. Nobody was coming to Jerusalem a no. hundred years ago. Right. Like what and Mark Twain said about it when he exactly. went, right? He, yeah. He says it's desolate and dreary and is like, I don't want to live here. Right. Like, this is a mess. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but now we have 4.5 million people prior to COVID that were coming to Jerusalem My just to goodness. experience it. And wow. things are growing, things are reviving. Mm -hmm. Again, we mentioned these, these old photos from 1844 and the census that was done in with only 15,000 people today, the, the city is well over a million. Wow. And so when we're talking about God reviving the city, this mm -hmm. is part of what's happening. Amen. And we're able to capture that in this, in these then and now photos. And you do. Yeah. I must say you do. Yeah. You capture it powerfully. And I love it how God is drawing his people um, to Jerusalem. And, you know, I don't know what's going on through these COVID times and afterwards and all that. But um, it's very exciting what, what he's doing. And, if, and yeah. I think if people ever have a chance to go, they should go. You know, if that's, I know it was always a heart's desire of mine. And literally one day we were sitting on the set and I never spoke it out to anybody. It wasn't like I was telling the whole world, I really want to go to Israel. And we were sitting on the set and Rabbi, this, and this is back in 2014, Rabbi um, Jonathan Kahn was sitting there where you are. And Jim was here and I'm sitting here. And Rabbi just looks over at us and he said, I'm taking you to Drew. I'm taking you to Israel. And okay. I was like, oh my goodness. How do you argue with that? Oh my goodness. You just answered that like the deepest desire of my heart yeah. is to, to go to the Holy Land. Yeah. And, and you just did it right before my eyes without me ever speaking it out amazing. to amazing. anybody. It was pretty amazing. amazing. So you never know. And look at Jim. See the picture of Jim amen. right there? Wow. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's honey. Um, you know, and, and the amazing thing, too, is that the scriptures talk about the nations flooding to, to Jerusalem. You know, you and I, uh, specifically yes. coming to worship the king mm -hmm. who's ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. So, you know, it, all of us, in one way or another, are all going to be going to Jerusalem. And, you know, and so that's I, right. I, I, I joke in about, one way or another. <laughs> I, I, in one way or the other. And and so I joke about yeah. like even with this photo book or when, when groups That's go right. is like, you know, if you go now or you pick up the photo book, you know, you're able to go there. It's like everybody loves to be ahead of the curve yes. and, and to beat the crowds. That's you know? so right. You get to beat the crowds because when the nations are coming, it's, Amen. it's, uh, I, in fact, I joke about it in the back of the book. I have a good friend who's watched the revival of Jerusalem for the last 20 years. And he makes a comment, sort of a tongue in cheek kind of a joke. And he says, you know, when, when the Lord is ruling in Jerusalem, I hope he's got a better traffic pattern than what's going on right now. Because <laughs> Jerusalem is a mess already. Oh, you know? man. It is so gorgeous, this book. It is absolutely stunning. It'll teach you so much. And like you said, all of us are going to go yeah. to Jerusalem Amen. one day. And it is exciting. It really is. How do the Old Testament prophecies, Doug, of the Lord's resurrection and return connect to the disciples' understanding that his return to Israel in Acts 1 meant. 
the restoration of Israel. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, sometimes we read things in Scripture without a, sort of a Jewish context, and, and we kind of misunderstand them. And so one of those comments is when, when the disciples say, Lord, is now the, the time you're restoring the kingdom to Israel. But these guys are Jewish boys, so if they're reading the prophets, if they, they understand their history, which of course they most likely do, there's a promise that's made to David in 2 Samuel 7, a promise to David, I'm going to have a man on your throne, uh, I'm going to use your family line, there's going to be a man who live forever that will, you know, that, uh, that will rule, and, and, you know, that's, as you well know, men and forever, uh, those, those two concepts normally don't go together. That's men, right. You know, that's, it's, uh, it's something, it was almost sort of a, a unique dichotomy, and then in, when we jump ahead to the birth of, or prior to the birth of, of Jesus, the angel shows up to, uh, to Mary and says, you'll, you'll name him Jesus. He'll be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And that's usually you know, where we stop with it. But he continues and says, the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. So again, He's in the line of David, I'm giving you a son, and he's going to live forever, and he's going to rule over the house of David. He's going to rule on the throne of David. And so for the disciples, by the time the book of Acts comes along, he's already been crucified, he's been raised to life, he's been teaching about the kingdom for 40 days, and the first question that, that's recorded that they ask after 40 days of listening to him talk about the kingdom of God, they say, Lord, is now the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And, you know, sometimes we'll read that and go, well, maybe they missed it. They were confused. They didn't know what was going on. I actually think it's just the opposite. They're, they're Jewish. They understand the promises that a man is going to live forever. You were just crucified. Uh, you were dead for a little. But, uh, you know, you're, you're alive. Um, man living forever, like, you're the only one who can, who can fulfill this promise. You are the only man who's living forever. Lord, is now the time you're going to fulfill the promises of David and to restore the kingdom? Is now the time to restore yeah. the kingdom to Israel? And so, even in the eyes of the, of the disciples, the, the, the future of Israel was still very much a, 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 a part and a, and a focus of what God was going to be doing. There are promises that God has not yet fulfilled to David. Right. That, that still needs to come about. And That's so, right. you know, if we say to each other, like, you know, does God keep his promises? Of course. Well, God made some promises to David yeah. that he has not yet fully fulfilled that we will see in our coming days. Amen. Wow, wow. so good. Now, is that why the Eastern Amen. Gate is sealed and there is a Muslim graveyard in front of that gate, which is so crazy. Oh my goodness, I'll never forget to go in there and I couldn't even, I, I couldn't yeah. believe it. It was crazy, right? Oh, well, the, it, most yeah. tours don't go there. Yeah, yeah. to the Rabbi Eastern. Rabbi yeah. took us there and the tension, just us being there, yeah. was pretty, it was pretty heavy. Yeah, it was. Yeah, again, it goes back to some, some historical context. In the 16th century, there, uh, there's an Ottoman uh, ruler and his, by the name of Suleiman the Magnificent. He's, mm -hmm. he's the one who builds the, what we consider the, the old walls of the city right now. Mm -hmm. But as he's building them uh, over that eastern side, he is, he is aware of, of the promises that the Messiah will come through the eastern gate. And so right. what, does, what does he do? He builds the eastern gate, or he restores it, but he builds it with, with it blocked off, and then plants uh, a Muslim graveyard in front to knowing that a, a, a rabbi, a messiah is not going to, he, he would be defiled mm -hmm. by entering in and thus not making him the messiah. And so, mm -hmm. but what he didn't realize is there's a prophecy in, in Ezekiel that talks about the eastern gate being shut for a time. Mm -hmm. And so here it is, this uh, someone who was specifically trying to keep out the messiah and yeah. ends up fulfilling the actual words of the prophets and, uh, but, you know, as, as we know from the, from the, uh, from the scriptures that Jesus, you know, he's able to walk through walls and raise dead people. That's, so that's right. Not, yes. It's not really, uh, yes, you know, he is. It's, it's not really a big deal. Nothing is going to keep him out. Nothing's going to keep him yeah. out. That's what's so crazy is that. Great. You're a wealth of information. We Doug. could, we could go all day. We really could. You really are a wealth of, I mean, I you're teaching it. so much to us and it's helping me to go back myself and just see how amazing the Lord is our God and mm. and I keep thinking about all the guests that have been coming on the broadcast that um, even just like race uh, uh, rabbi Jason Sobel was just here um, a few days ago and that was mm. incredible and and with Archbishop um, Dominica yes Dominica mm. she was just incredible and everybody you know keeps reminding us that you know 
I don't know. Everything's been so westernized and yeah. it, more, you know, Jesus is more. I mean, they didn't really call him Jesus. Yeah, like his when, name was Yeshua. Yeshua in Hebrew. Yeah. in Hebrew. Right. And so I know Maricela's had such a yearning. She's mm -hmm. she's just been she's on this treasure hunt to try to understand all this mm -hmm. and teach yeah. her own children this as well. Yeah. And it's so exciting that you have so much yeah. information that you can teach us. And, teach and, us. And, and what's amazing about even that name is in Hebrew, even in modern Hebrew, there's only one way that you, how you pronounce the word salvation in Hebrew, and it's pronounced Yeshua. Wow. Yeshua. So, so anytime that you read in the Bible that God will bring salvation to his Thank people, it's God. literally saying God will bring Yeshua to wow. his people. Isn't that beautiful? And so, you know, like his, when we, in, in Hebrew, his name is all through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. It Praise is God. incredible. I just love how God, you know, he, he kind of has us go on a little bit of a treasure hunt. And those who seek him will find him. Amen. What was the signpost of Jesus returning and ruling in Jerusalem? So in, in the book of Acts, we all know Acts 2. Yes. Acts 2 is Pentecost. And, and uh, from, a, from a Jewish perspective, Pentecost means 50th. It, it comes 50 days after Passover. And so uh, in Acts 2, of course, we know what happens at uh, about nine in the morning. You know, um, these guys aren't drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning, and, you know, and they're, they're being <laughs> yeah. filled with the Spirit, and, and three thousand you know come to uh, come to faith. That's right. Later on, I, I personally, I think it's the same day. Peter and John are going up to the temple to pray, and um, which is about three in the afternoon, and uh, and there's a a, a, a leper who. You, you know the story, silver and gold have I none, but you know what I do give to you, yeah. stand to your feet. And so Peter begins preaching, really probably for the second time in, in a day, you know, to really a, the same amount of large crowds. And so in Acts 3, there's a verse here that, again, not kind of reading it from a Jewish perspective, we, we kind of missed some things that were, were very obvious to everybody that was there. In Acts 3, verse 19, it says, Therefore repent and return so that your sins might be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And, and we know that verse, but that's not the end of his thought. That's not the end of even the, of the sentence. And it says that he may send Jesus or Yeshua, the Christ appointed to you, whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things, which God spoke about by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times. And if you're not Jewish, you read through those sort of things and you go, I'm not sure what he's talking about, something spiritual, and you know, we move on. But to, to a group of Jewish people that were coming from all over the known world back to celebrate one of the three annual feasts, to Pentecost or in Hebrew Shavuot, they understood. So on day one, in the morning at 9 a.m., they're talking about be filled with the Holy Spirit. By the afternoon, they're talking about the return of Jesus. They, he's already gone. They're looking for him to come back that, that, um, that he may send Jesus, the, the Christ appointed to you, whom heaven must receive until, until what? Until the restoration of all things. And we think, well, that's sort of a large term, but the, he explains even more, the restoration of what things? It's the restoration of all things, which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets since ancient times. And so the question is, what is the one thing that every prophet, almost every prophet in, in the Old Covenant, what is the one thing that they all talked about? Mm -hmm. And if you go back and you look at even like Nahum, Obadiah, you know, some of these prophets, they all talked about the restoration of Israel. Yes, that's right. And that's so, right. so if putting that that's in good. context, I'll read the verse again. Okay. And it says that he may send uh, Yeshua, the Christ appointed to you, whom heaven must receive, until the period of the restoration of, of the nation of Israel, because that's what God spoke about by the mouth of his holy prophets since ancient times. He is keeping Amen. his promises. Thank and so Lord. what that means is that on the day of Pentecost, if there's, if there's two messages being preached, one at 9 a.m. and one at 3, the what's being preached in the morning is be filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happens in the afternoon, this is when the Lord, they're already talking about the Lord's return, and it will be when there is a full restoration of the nation of Israel because God will keep all of his promises yes, through all of the prophets. Mm -hmm. And what's so special about that to me is that it says that he will keep him uh, or that heaven will, will keep him or will receive him until there will become a time in heavenly history, however this works, where not even heaven will be able to hold him back. Right. Is that, you know, yeah. if you think about all the yeah. things that are happening in the wow. heavenlies and the things, you know, being, being worshipped as, as the lamb of, of the one who provided the sacrifice, 
they're teaching from day one of church history, this is the return of the Lord. And when there is a full restoration of the nation of Israel, because that's what all the prophets talked about, of keeping his faithful word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob into the land, when that, re when that restoration is, is completed, and however God decides, not even heaven will be able to keep him from coming wow. back. Mm. And so when we're talking about Israel being a signpost, or if it's a, it's a significant thing on the time clock, it's not a particular you know, notification that times are getting close. According to Peter, it is the signpost. Yes. It's be filled with the Spirit in the morning. This is when the Lord returns, is when there's a full restoration. So when we're Beautiful. talking about Israel rising, when we're talking about Jerusalem rising, we're mm -hmm. talking about a, a revival of a city that God not only says that is significant to him, but it mm -hmm. is the city that he's returning to. Yeah, that's right. And, and from day one of church history, mm -hmm. they're talking about the restoration of Jerusalem as a key factor mm -hmm. to the return of the king coming back to rule and to reign. Wow. And so in our day, when you were talking about, you know, things that are happening in our generation and the yeah. things that are happening, the things that we're seeing in our generation right now are things that our parents and our, our grandparents could have never dreamed of. No. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing it happening, as you mentioned earlier, in such a dramatic rate, such a dramatic amount of speed. And so as the, the exactly. nation of Israel is being restored, according to the scriptures, there's something coming very, very quickly. Yes. yes. When, when God decides that this is the full restoration mm -hmm. of the nation of Israel that he promised, there's a king yes. that is coming. And yes. He's coming quickly. Amen. Amen. And he's coming quickly. Thank you, Father. Thank you for setting your son. Wow. And if you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. you ask him into your heart right now. Maybe you just need to rededicate your life to him. And, and he'll give you that hunger and that thirst for him like you've never experienced before. And this type of, this type of a product that helps equip you to know him even better and to know his ways even more is so excellent. You, mm. This is what I love about your work, Doug, is you, you do it with excellence. Mm. And you. I really appreciate that about you because you're bringing this to all of us, to the whole entire world. So everybody, order one. Jim would say, order it right now. I know him. I know what he would say. <laughs> Call us at 1-888-988-1588. And Doug, thank you for being with us today. Thank we you. loved it. We thank appreciate you. you so very much. And um, I just got to throw one other thing out there real quick. Are you ever going to do anything on the Galilee? Another project like the Galilee? Well, I actually have a, a third volume already in, in production about the stories of the Jewish people as they're returning home. So wow. prior to COVID, I, I was able to interview uh, 30 pioneers of the state of Israel from 19 different nations, from five different continents, and record their stories of how they all came wow. back. So that's that's in production right wow. now. That's oh, exciting. That so pray for Doug, everybody. Pray for Doug Thank as you. he is pursuing what God has laid on his heart to bring to the world. And remember, God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for now. We love you.